priority will be. I imagine not Shen have to be somewhere on the ban table given the performances that they've had throughout this tournament. We also should consider whether or not Bard will be taken away from Ejim. Uh, yeah. As well as the Vlad, we have seen a, a popular pick coming out from the Saigon Jokers as well. So uh, a lot of available things to be taken away and we'll see what they decide to prioritize. Yeah, and interestingly enough, of course, the Cassiopeia once again banned away from Swiffer. This guy is a pretty good snake lady. Makes a heck of a lot of sense. Rex I going to follow there, so Spooks does have to mix up his champion picks. It's a pretty deep champion pool, but not going to be able to head back to that comfort as Karma banned away by the Chiefs, followed by the Vladimir. So already Vettius predicting the draft quite nicely. Just need a Nah to round things out here, Saigon Jokers. Nah, it's going to be the Shen. Nah and Shen likely to be the final rotating bans. It would be very risky of Chiefs to not Ooh, ban the Nah right plank. now. Yeah, Gangplank, the thing about him is he does have a couple more counter picks available. When we look at the NAR, there really aren't that many options. Echo would be your best bet, uh, but even still, it's a very risky matchup that can be very volatile, especially something that we did see earlier on in the tournament. Well, very interestingly, it's going to be the Elise, so they just leave that top lane pool open as far as Gangplank and NAR are concerned. Wow. And Gragas is going to be snapped up, so that trinity of junglers in, of course, Elise, uh, Rek'Sai, and Gragas. They are okay. all going to be taken away. So that does make sense. Take the Gragas because he is the next best jungler available right now. Suggests that Chiefs likely to go towards something like the Nidalee or perhaps something a little bit out of the box like the Olaf. We did see or the, the Lee Sin. Or, or the, the Lee Graves. Sin. Oh, yeah. baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, but for Chiefs, it would make a lot of sense right now to pick up that Gnar because of how powerful he is right now, because of how very few champions can be picked into it. Uh, it would just be a very safe comfort pick that the Chiefs could get away with early rotating. Yeah, and we know that Swiper plays a fantastic Nara as well. Not necessarily uh, all that comfortable on the gangplank towards the top side, and he's going to lock that one away after hovering over things like the, uh, the Trindamir and the Alawi for a little while. And Ray's thinking about the Siva, was actually banned away from them in their first series, so going to pick that one up now. So already Chiefs building a, a pretty well-rounded uh, teamfight composition. You have good scaling and good teamfight damage coming out from the Sive. You have the setup engage with the Na and Sive combo too. And you've also got pretty dominant lanes because Sive naturally pushes uh, as well as the Na up in the top lane typically has the advantages into most one versus one matchups. If you're Saigon Jokers right now, you need to think as to how we can mitigate this. So you want to look at something like the Echo and you want to perhaps pick up your early support, perhaps something like a Braum to mitigate the pushing power of Sive, who's also very good at disengaging fights as well. Yeah. Or you could go for a safe AD carry like Jin, who offers a lot of team fight prowess and something that a lot of teams had had a lot of success with, with throughout this tournament. One thing I do love is this current hover that uh, Levita does have towards the middle of the map and that Lissandra would have been phenomenal in the Chiefs composition. Was one that they brought out in the final in the OPL and it is going to be locked away. So I like it. Two solid solo lanes here from the Jokers. You do have a bit of flexibility between these two champions as well because you could yeah, look to put the Echo lane. in the mid lane. You could put Lissandra up in the top. Hell, you could even put Lissandra in support if you wanted to be a little bit more creative. It is likely to be in the mid because of how safe she is as a mid laner. But I think this is risky from Saigon because there are a number of free quote-unquote picks that you can now pick into the Lissandra. Things like Malzahar, Cassadin are actually a very solid picks that could go into it. You could also look to pick something like the Talia. A little bit risky, but in terms of the roaming power, you can easily match Lissandra and you can make her life very difficult during the laning phase. Yeah, Talia, of course, a champion that Swiffer is very comfortable on. But the one that they're hovering at the moment is another one of those. We'll see whether Swiffer is going to be able to pick that one up. And it is going to be the Talia... Four seconds to go. Alistair to be picked up. And this is a Chiefs composition. This is what we wanted to see out of the Oceanians. Ejim Ali God, the man that made his name as he went overseas and pulverized people. So right now, it's just Chiefs sticking to what they had already initially drafted. The Sivir and Nar, the setup for the team fight. And now you have... Um, Good disengage with the Talia, also really good kiting, but she's just very valuable in these team fights with the amount of crowd control she can bring once she has that Royal Eyes and zoning she can have with the wall and with her E. And then Alistair, he just provides so much in terms of utility, frontline, engage. And for Saigon Jokers, they now need to think, okay, how do we deal with this? We have the Lissandra, we have the Echo, we have good side laners, we have a good 1-3-1. One, one. We just need to pick something up that can sit in the mid lane and perhaps act as a more reliable form of engage. Yeah, and the thing that's ridiculous at the moment is Saigon Jokers' amount of CC that they would have if they lock away these two picks. There is no champion on this map that doesn't have multiple forms of CC 
all sorts of lockdown, AOE, like just ridiculous as they do take it away. It is going to be the mustache bottom lane as Ash and Braum are locked away. And against Siva Alistair, I'd put that well in favor of the Saigon Jokers, especially early. Uh, it's definitely the slightly stronger lane because Siva will struggle to trade back. But in terms of pushing power, you have to give it to the Siva every time. It's a, it can be a very risky matchup. It very much depends on who gets the lane sooner. But for the overall comp of Saigon, they have good disengage. They have good hard engage. I would have preferred the Tarek a little bit more because of how good he is at mitigating the, a powerful teamfight comp. But for the Chiefs now, they still have the jungle pick left open. There's still a lot of available options. And because the three trifecta, the trinity of junglers, have been taken away, uh, the likely fallback is something like the Graves, like the Olaf. And, I mean, you did call it earlier, the Graves pick is very yep. likely to come out from the Chiefs. Yeah, and uh, of course, Spook's very comfortable on the champion. Has been playing more of these uh, utility-based junglers recently just because of how much he loves tracking his opponents. But we'll certainly be able to hard farm the jungle on this Graves, get himself in amongst it, see what he can do as far as challenging the Jokers. So a very solid draft overall from Chiefs. They have good scaling. They have uh, powerful laners because you can get the shove in with the Civet, the Talia, and the Nar. Uh, the only thing that they're going to risk is the early gank pressure that they will lack a little bit with Graves, but you still have a fair amount of setup in the top lane and in the bottom lane for him to come in and provide the damage to get a successful gank off. So I do like the comp from the Oceania, but then from the side of Saigon, they also have a pretty well-rounded disengage, good 1-3-1, and I'm looking forward to seeing how well these two comps match up against each other. Yeah, I'm excited as well, and I mean, you, you didn't quite mention uh, the mid lane where they also have a heck of a lot of setup, especially pre-6 on that Lissandra. Oh, yeah. So the Chiefs, of course, maybe not with the Graves having what would be considered generally that, uh, I guess, ganking power, but with the amount of follow-up to the soft CC on the top side of the map and the hard sort of knockback CC with that uh, seismic shove in the mid lane could really be a massive thing. And, I mean, we don't even need to mention Alistair. That guy's made out of CC. Oh, yeah. But and I'm looking forward to seeing how this one plays out. Something that we talked about earlier on in the day was Saigon. They seem to have the right idea, but in terms of execution, does seem to be the issue. So we'll see how they can follow up against this heavy teamfight comp of the Chiefs. Yeah, and it seems like they've got a heck of a lot of buttons that do a whole lot of making you stop doing things. As we hop onto the rift for our final match of the day. Of course, day two of IWCQ will be concluding after this one as the Saigon Jokers are up against the Chiefs. Blue side for the Saigon Jokers. And we'll see where they're going to start things off as far as that jungle is concerned. And exactly what Hanyan wants to get done this game. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, a win here would be very big for both teams because Chiefs, they want to be moving up in the table right now, sitting in the middle of the pack with the 1-1, whereas Saigon yet to get a win on the board. So both desperately fighting to get these early wins to make headway in this tournament. Yeah, and Swiffer now, very cheeky positioning here towards the bottom side as Celebrity. We'll see whether he walks into range as... Yeah, there it is. Just throw out a volley. Smack him in the face. <laughs> Just a uh, careful lub tap. Yeah. Best way to express yourself. I think that was about four or five love taps. <laughs> <laughs> that is not the amount that you want when they're coming in the form of damage. Now, we briefly talked on Swiffer. Yesterday, he did bring out the Talia. Earlier on, he did change things up to the Victor, um, but he got shut down pretty heavily uh, on that today. Obviously, the Vladimir got very far ahead uh, which made his laning that, phase very difficult. That interesting 2 0 yep. start <laughs> from Vladimir. <laughs> yep. Uh, and that made his life difficult. But the moment he died 1v1 in lane, he, he did seem to tilt off the face of the planet. He most certainly did. And that really did make things just so much worse for the Chiefs. So I want to keep my eyes on the mid lane and see how things play out. This should be favorable for Swiffer through the laning phase. He should be able to get that early push. That is what the Talia is so well known for. Um, but. As you mentioned, a lot of CC with the Lissandra. And if he oversteps a little bit too much, he could be at danger of a, a flanking Gragas coming in in the early game. Yeah, and that Glacial Path going to be so important for Levita as well to get himself out of trouble. Did see the fact that the Chief supporters are out in force. Australia has woken up to see whether they can take down the Saigon Jokers in their second game of today. 73% feeling like they'll be able to take this one down. We'll see whether that's going to be true. As already, Ejim's taken a heck of a lot of damage here towards the bottom side. So this was something that we were talking about during Champions. Like, the Ash Braum does have the advantage early on. Um, because of, in terms of the ability to trade, it is very important for Chiefs to get that early push. Uh, they're 
clear of the Gromp was a little bit slow, which means that they got to lane a little bit later. We made it very difficult for them to get this push against Saigon, which is why now they have so much pressure. Unfortunately for Saigon, they over pushed a little bit, which means that they could, didn't deny as much farm as perhaps they would have liked to, but that isn't really that evident in the CS differential you can already see growing. Yeah, exactly right. 17 to, uh, yeah, 16 to 7 right now. As Swiffer is looking to try and deny himself a red buff, doesn't quite Ooh. find... The Q. Aim a little bit off there. Uh, I feel he could have stolen that red buff if he wanted to, but uh, more of a zoning Q than it anything else. It was a little bit. <laughs> but, you know, there was a lot of groundwork there in the mid lane. Wanted to get himself out of there. Work some more towards the bottom side jungle. As Hanyan. This is cute. Very aggressive early invade. The lane is pushing towards Saigon, but... We'll have to see whether or not anything can be set up because Race does have his spell shield. You also have the disengage coming out from Alistair. He's going to look for it, though. Yeah, not a big creep wave. There's the headbutt pulverized. Good. Unbreakable comes in, but doesn't actually quite find it. As there's Ejim. Concussive blow is going to stun him up. The heel comes out there trying to save the Alistair. Another triumph from Raw is not going to be there. And first blood goes to Celebrity. Hanyan with a successful first gank at four minutes in. Great way to start the game for Saigon Jokers, taking advantage of how they set up the lane in the bottom as we do see a bit of aggression up top. Yeah, Parallel Convergence is there as Swiper will have Meganar very, very soon. Shield comes down from Row, but not too much more to happen. So right now, things going in the way of Saigon Jokers. Picking up that first blood is going to do fantastic for that bottom lane. Already built up a big CS lead, and it's going to be made even worse with Raze losing his support. Just look at all the summoner spells that we use for the side of Chiefs. The Flash gone for Ejim, the Exhaust gone, the Heal as well. Whereas for Celebrity, uh, he still has all of his summoners up available, which is fantastic. Um, in terms of how they're going to be able to set up this lane. The Ash now, 30 CS to 23, and that was already set up because the Alistair decided to go aggressive. He was too overzealous. In terms of the Alistair versus Braum matchup, the moment you commit, you have to go for the all-in. Otherwise, Braum is going to quickly able to shut you down. He can chase you up with that Winter's Bite, and then with the extra support there from the Gragas, good flash body slam enabled the damaged, the crowd control to get the kill down onto Ejim, which then gives Saigon, uh, Saigon Jokers the first blood. Yeah, actually, Swiper just went back to base as well, grabbed himself an extra Doran's Blade and some boots as well as that refillable potion. So Swiper going relatively aggressive, but that's matched on the side of Roe. He's going to teleport back with a Sheen. Definitely an important pickup for the Echo. Um, it enables you to trade back and forth very nicely with the Nar. Notice that he is being a little bit aggressive with how he's actually setting up the lane, so he needs to be careful of Swiffer's potential roaming. This is one of the great things about Talia. All she has to do is move into the Fog of War, and the laners just have to back away because of her ability to so effectively roam. But it looks like that Ro, he's saying, I don't care, I know you're not level 6 yet, I can still be as aggressive as I want in the top half of the map. Yeah. Saigon Jokers as well, so much deep vision going down here on their blue side jungle of the Chiefs making sure that this lead that they have on the bottom side is continued as Roe has to ult himself away from Swiper. There's the flash into the wallop. The stun will be there, but there's the Nar. Swiffer comes down. Seismic shove dashed out of the way. Up. There's the flash from Roe, who finds the time winder. He's going to have to hit the Q. Swiper not going to get it. The minion gets in the way. Fantastic escape from the Saigon Joker's top laner. Good guy minion helping out his top. What looked like an awful situation for Ro. He's able to get away from. And this is fantastic for him because Swiffer spent so much time rotating to the top half of the map. He will have lost a lot of experience, a lot of farm, which ends in no gain for the side of Chiefs. So Saigon's still going to hold on to that lead. Ro is going to burn his flash, but Swiper had to use his in exchange. So overall... Positive exchange for the Saigon Jokers. It is. The only thing that's not necessarily going in their favor now is that jungle. 34 oh to my. 18 is pretty ridiculous for the Graves. Of course, known for his ability to farm a little bit more than that of Gragas. But, I mean, that's getting into the realm of pretty crazy seven uh, minutes in. A lot of this is due to the fact that Hanyan decided to go for the early gank in the bottom lane. Uh, we have to remember that a lot of setup time was spent going for that. And it looks like Spooks has decided to go for very early Zerka's Greaves, which will dramatically improve his clear speed and, in all honesty, improve your early game a lot. So he, you can just tell that he's going towards the farm style. This is something that we talked about doing champion select. And it's something that uh, he is pretty well known for. Yeah. Well, you can see Saigon Jokers now clearing out the pink ward that they saw Swiffer put down a little bit earlier on. 
Making sure that Levita is as safe as possible there as well. Hanyan just sitting in his back pocket. Spooks will be able to take away his red buff without any contest. So we have a look down towards the bottom side. That lead has not grown as Raze is able to keep up. Double longsword to BF sword, though, is a matchup that I wouldn't be all that happy in. No. Uh, BF sword is definitely what any AD carry would want on their first back. And it is resulting in the Chiefs bottom lane constantly being zoned away. This is where you somewhat regret having so much pushing power uh, because now the lane is always going to be pushing towards the duo that is so much stronger than you. They're going to hit level 6 first. They're going to have that all-in potential. And if they, if Braun can hit 6 before Ejim can, they're going to have to be very careful of the risk of the arrow into uh, the ultimate from Braun, which could result in another kill down bottom. Yeah. One thing that the Chiefs do have is that if Ejim can get in the way of the arrow, make sure that he's positioning himself correctly between Celebrity and Rays, he will be able to use that Unbreakable Will to get himself out of any CC. Seismic Shove going to net a blue buff here for Swiffer. As he heads back into the mid lane. And there's a lot of people congregating here on the bottom side. There's a headbutt pulverizer celebrity. Not going to be able to get too much back, but Levita just looking for his way in. There is a ward in that brush. And that is so important for the Chiefs. It's Hanyan coming around for the dive. Ward goes over there from the Chiefs as Rays and Ejim say, yep, yeah, we're getting the heck out of dodge right now. Hawkshot flies through. There is a collapse from the Chiefs. Teleport is available from Swiper, but not from Row. This could be the big deal as Ejim dodges the Winter's Bite. That tower is going to be safe for now. The setup from Saigon was promising. They realized that right now, the bottom half of the map is where their strongest players are. They wanted to try and force a play because Ejim was still level 5. He didn't have his unbreakable will, and they felt like this was a great opportunity to either get a pick or try and get themselves that first turret. Unfortunately, they couldn't do either because they just weren't as quick on the mark as they would have. They didn't properly set up the minion wave to be able to last underneath the turret, and that means that because... Swi uh, Swiffer and Spooks were already moving to the bottom half of the map. Saigon were forced to disengage. And this is something that we have seen from Saigons yesterday, where they have the right idea, but in terms of setup and execution, is where they often lacked, and is a large part as to why they fell to Rampage on day one. Yep, definitely good to have the right idea, though, to begin <laughs> with. As Swipe is going to clear out this pink ward. Of course, Roe did the same thing back in that brush towards the river that Swiffer put down one more time. Able to throw down Seismic Shove, clears out the rest of that lane. Of course, Levita just feels like he's dealing with, I guess, cleanup duty most of this game. Talia, pretty well known for her ability to shove as Roe throws down a Time Winder to do the same thing as well. And Alessandra looking for a possible gank towards the top side. Hanyan here at the same time. You can see the pings coming out. Saigon, they want to get the collapse down onto Swiper, and here they go. Yeah, there's the flash. Just trying to get the dash in, but Time Winder doesn't connect. Swiper. Will he actually go forward? Doesn't quite know, but there's more action on the bottom side. Celebrity's in trouble. Spooks gets exhausted, holding onto his buttons here as the Ash is going to fall down. No, he is, but there's a kill on the top side of the map as well. Rose able to pick that one up eventually. Of course, the Lissandra was there, but I don't even think she was needed. This tower taking a lot of damage. Action all over the map, and this is what we want to see from the International Wildcard Tournament, as both teams are able to pick up a kill, both teams are going to be able to pick up a tower, and ooh, creative use of the teleport to buy time oh. in order for them to match the teleport on the other side. They aren't going to be able to get the first Blood Tower bonus, but this is better than nothing. Most certainly is. It's going to mean that the gold is entirely even as we hit the 11 minute mark. Let's have a look at this top lane dive at the same time as there's the frozen tomb. Uh, easy setup. You have yeah. the ultimate. They uh, did They did need the Lissandra, yes, by the did. way, Betty. Uh, the flash body slam coming out from Gragas as well, just to add insult to injury. And then you had the echo coming in for the cleanup kill. So great teamwork up in the top half. We saw very similar down in the bottom where finally Chiefs were able to claw some of the disadvantage that they had fallen into uh, earlier on into the game. Note now that the Sivir has been able to pick up both the BF Sword and the Corefields Warhammer. So even though there is a big CS differential, he's still well on track to match the, the two three-item power spike that both AD carries are working towards. So yeah. good for Chiefs right now. Close to a 30 CS lead, however, for Celebrity, whose Ash has been dominant in this laning phase so far. But like you mentioned, that item advantage no longer there. Ooh, interesting. It looks like that uh, Londa, uh, Levita sorry, has now picked up the thruster belt. Yeah, dash cannon. 
That's the badger, yeah. The 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 dash cannon. Definitely a creative name. Not one that I've heard before, but it well, makes it's a, a lot cannon, of sense. And um, you dash with it. Yeah. <laughs> that is that is how I came up with it. Yeah. Uh it's it's ingenious, I know. Creative, I like it. Um, <laughs> meanwhile, Swiffer decided to go for more of the conventional Slappy wand, you know, one that you have to be close in range so that you can hit them with, and then you get the reduced magic resistance on the oh, other side. That's fantastic. You'll always get me with slappy wand. That's that's <laughs> just, that's fantastic. Um, Ajim's uh, found himself a ward. Doesn't have a slappy wand, but however, is still going to slap the ward to death. And look at the positioning of Ajim. Maybe looking for a flank onto the Lissandra. Well, actually, just running in. Headbutt Pulverize does go down. Seismic Shove's there. Lots of damage wow. on the Lissandra, who keeps the ultimate. Teleport cancelled from Ro on the top side. Actually, he was wandering back to lane. Saigon Joker's now down a teleport, and that is going to be a big deal. In fact, down both of them. Smart use of the teleport to just dissuade the Chiefs from overcommitting, because... If that teleport had come in and the rest of Saigon were there, then Chiefs would have been in an, a compromising position, so they were forced to disengage. And then Ro, yes, he does lose his teleport, but he does keep his mid laner alive. So overall, the, the play was positive. But then we have to criticize Levita for falling to that prey in the first place, using your E to clear the wave rather than as an escape tool, made it very easy for Egypt to just walk up, get the CC down, and put you in a very compromising situation. Also had a dash cannon. So it could have he used did have a the dash, dash cannon. part of the cannon <laughs> in order to get himself out of the way. But didn't. Swiffer dodges the Q. Levita only gets hit by the last few. There's a seismic shove once again. Frozen Tomb down onto himself as Ejim doesn't get the headbutt pulverized based on that. Throws down his ultimate. Arrow hits Raze as now Sue's turned up. Hanyan's here at the same time. One more auto attack is spell shielded as Raze is safe. Swiffer in trouble. Rose looking oh! for a seismic shove. Saves him and Spooks grabs the kill. That's one for the Chiefs in a situation I wasn't expecting him to get one in. Chiefs are able to turn the fight in their favor. Initially the setup onto Levita was promised Thing, but this was the situation we were talking about earlier on where they overcommit Saigon. They get themselves the flank. They're looking to get the collapse down onto the Chiefs. But then with some beautiful kiting coming out from Swiffer, they were able to get themselves a kill down onto the Echo, which is exactly what they needed to get the momentum that Chiefs so heavily rely on. Yeah, and this is an Echo that just picked up his Trinity Force as well. I mean, that power spike was well and truly online, wanting to capitalize on it there in the mid lane. Unfortunately, just stars not quite aligning for the Saigon Jokers. Look at this frozen mallet now completed for Swipper as well. Definitely going to be helping Am out in the one versus one matchup. Going to be able to kite back. And this is where you see the setup. Really good use of abilities to get so much damage down onto Levita. He is now out of this fight completely. The arrow lands on a raise. And then the flank from Gragas into the initiation from the Saigon Jokers is so good. But now you're seeing the kiting power of Swiffer. And just so good seismic shove to buy enough time for him to create the gap in order for him to survive. And then Spooks is just there for the damage to clean up the kill. Just fantastic execution from the Chiefs to not only get out, but get themselves a kill as well. Yeah, Spooks, once again, there with the damage onto the ward. He's able to clear that one out towards the bottom side of middle lane. Swiffer has got the Weaver's Wall, and we'll see whether he looks to use it. Frozen Tomb back up once again as the Q is there. Swiffer now in trouble. Seismic Shove does get Levita out, though, as he takes a lot of damage. Spooks has collapsed on, though, and Roe grabs the kill with the roam from top lane. Levita playing with his life, to be honest. Levita with the bait and switch right there goes aggressive onto Swiffer, who doesn't have any summoner spells. Graves comes in to try and provide support, and then immediately they fall onto him, but now Ejim, he wants some action himself. Yeah, delivers Roe. Is able to use his ultimate to get out, but Swipe is there. Does have a boomerang for him, but doesn't get the hyper proc. And the Chiefs now turning the aggression to the mid lane as far as sieging down this turret. Teleports both up, though. Saigon Joker is going to have none of it. But this is pretty promising for the Chiefs right now because they are going to force a few members from the Saigon back, buy enough time for their jungler to come back, and now they can look to set it for the dragon, which is going to be spawning in 45 seconds. And ooh, on the hunt gets popped. Not what they want with the dragon spawning in 45 seconds. So, but uh, flash traded, I guess. Very you know, true, very true. Theoretically still worth it. Oh, yeah, I think I mean, you're right as far as looking for that dragon fighter. There's another claw that comes in. Swiffer is altered back. Seismic Shove doesn't find anyone. And there's the last auto attack to grab the kill for the Lissandra. Her first of the game, now 1-0-2. 
Got to give props to Hanyan. 0-0-4 has been involved in every kill that Saigon has been able to pick themselves up. And really, he has been a big facilitator in getting so many of the advantages that they've been able to accrue this game. He set up the play down bottom. He gets a gank up in the top lane. And now, he's able to get another kill down onto Schwiffer. And he's keeping his laners alive, even after the relentless pressure that has been coming out of the Chiefs. Yeah, and the Chiefs now looking to try and fend off this dragon take from the Saigon Jokers, but it's going down so fast it will be taken. As they are pinging out the area. We'll see whether they go for any sort of engagement as Mountain Drake is going to be dragon number three. Now, of course, one ocean apiece for both of these guys. Rose stealing away a red buff. And I'm not sure whether Swipe is going to make it here in time. Crushes himself over. Uh, we'll see whether he can just pick up the red. He's able to do so. So thank you very much, says Swiper. That was a good leash. Real yeah. good leash. Cheers, mate. Uh it's been a while since we've seen leashing in the game, but clearly Saigon, thinking back to season two, If there's anyone three, you don't want to get a red buff as well, it's Nah. Oh yeah, especially with a frozen mallet already completed, oh just adding goodness. insult to injury. Um, but it looks like he is ready to rumble as he throws down that red buff. Yeah, the bounce comes in as well as he is able to dash himself back in, but look at this, has to flash out of the way. Parallel Convergence, of course, not going to do anything... And in go the Chiefs in the mid lane, understanding the added pressure that they do have, but not able to find anything. I mean, this is great for the Chiefs. They know right now that their top laner is winning, and he is winning hard, especially with the red buff that he's just been able to pick up. They can now look to rotate some of the members to the top half of the map, get themselves a free turret, um, but it looks like they're not going to do that. I feel like this is a big opportunity that they've missed out on. You can leave Swiffer in the mid lane. You know that your top laner has pressure over the Echo, and so you can just use your AD carry and support to guarantee another turret for yourself and start to build up a bit of a, a gold advantage. But instead, they're not going to take advantage of it. They're not going to rely on this pressure. And uh, honestly, a bit of an oversight, because you may very well now give the Rift Herald over to Saigon. Yeah. They do have Rift Scuttle Vision, of course. Pink Ward just above that Herald pit. Not going to reveal too much as EGM spotted by the Hawkshot. And Swiffer playing very defensively here in the mid lane. So now you can see the rotation of Raze up to the top half of the map. This is the play that I feel would be the strongest for the Chiefs to make. Keep Swiffer on the bottom side right now. Keep him where the Gnar is looking to try and put pressure. Um, but it, the, the rotation is just a little bit too slow because Lissandra has enough wave clear to buy time. She's also got the ultimate very close to her Zonyas as well. Um, so it's going to be a struggle for Chiefs to actually set this one up as now Sagon looking for a play. Yeah, Arrow actually flies through, doesn't land onto anyone. In fact, wasn't anywhere near Spooks if that's where he was aiming. A zoning Arrow, Zoning Arrow, ah, just gaining yes. control over the area. Perfect. All part of the plan. Um, I feel like he was looking for... Um, Swiffer in the mid lane, but... Risky, though. I mean, he has his cleanse back up, so even if he is able to land it, I suppose you're trading ult for summon a spell. Um, oh my goodness. Swipe it. It's okay, Vettius. He doesn't have the red buff anymore. <laughs> That's the bright side of this situation. <laughs> but Talia now coming down. Yeah, there's the weave as well. He's going to get behind the turret as Row Takes a Q to the face. Seismic shove will be looked for, but not found by Swiffer. But this is more than enough because they should be able to put pressure down onto this tier 2 in the bottom. But again, the setup for the Chiefs, not quite there. They didn't have the minion wave. Swift are coming in a little bit too soon, which means that they're not going to be able to get any real damage down onto that turret. Whereas Saigon, they actually got a chunk off on that mid tier 1. And now here comes the teleport. Ejim does get the headbutt Ooh. back as Celebrity just survives. Ejim's going to hoof him to the head as the ultimate is down. Spook's in trouble. Frozen Tomb on top. As you can see, Ro ults himself back. But He's a little bit early. Alive. Massive gnaw from Swiper in the back line as Hanyan's in trouble. Excellent disengage with the explosive cast. But in the end, it's a 1 for 2 in favor of the Chiefs. Chiefs get a fantastic fight. Even though Saigon get the double teleport in so good position. Positions, they get onto primary targets, they're just not able to get themselves any kills, and now Chiefs, they want a little bit more. Yeah, he's going to find it. But Levita utilizes that Chlorodoom, gets, gets himself out. Seismic shove, unable to be used. Hanyan just can't defend the turret, and it falls in favor of the Chiefs in the mid lane, extending their lead to just over 1,000. Just under 1,000, should I say. And getting that mid-tier one is going to be so important for them in terms of gaining control over the map. This is going to make roaming for Swiffer so much easier. Finding picks with the Civi is going to be so much easier. And just overall extending your vision control into the enemy jungle is just going to be so much easier. Now, if we actually see the setup for this, Ejim is soaking up a lot of the damage. 
Really good initiation onto Celebrity to oh. then get the follow-up from Swiffer. Really good setup to knock the AD carry down. But look at the positioning of Spruce. He should die. But instead, they change focus. Roe uses the ultimate a little bit too soon. And then straight into the warm embrace of Swiper. Where he's then able to net himself another kill. Just so many things going right for Chiefs. But that combo of Swiffer and Ejim, this was the Chiefs that I was expecting. That was the double bounce that we were looking for. Skipping stones in the mid lane, which sort of makes sense. Swift I didn't know the geological champion. Didn't know that the uh, Australians are so good at ping pong. <laughs> we play a different kind of pong. <laughs> I'll tell you about it a little bit later. <laughs> Saigon Jokers clear out some vision. Dragon, 45 seconds. Uh, Mountain Drake on the board. Definitely a valuable objective to pick up. We saw how impactful multiple dragons can be earlier on in the day if you're able oh, to get yes. the hell the dragon as well. Uh, and now Raze, he needs to be careful. A lot of members of Saigon posturing around this red. Yeah, able to pick up a Cinderling, but not the red buff itself. As Hanyan is able to utilize his smite to grab that one away. Baron, of course, has been up for uh, three minutes this stage, but looks like this dragon should possibly be the focus. Not a lot of early Baron threat from either of these teams. No Malzahars, no Cassiopeias, things like that to try and melt it down. But we need to keep our eyes on the items as well, because note that the dragon going to be spawning. Teleport's still on cooldown for the sign of Saigon. They need to be on the move right now, because Chiefs are in a prime position to take this one down. And it's going to be an easy objective, given the Saigon. They're in no way near position to try and contest. Yeah, already down to about below half health. Ray's going to come in, resets his auto attack. Hanyan should be able to get into the pit, but no, doesn't get the vision down. Spook smites it away. That is definitely a good news story because you're exactly right. Looking down at the items, it was definitely a spike period here for the Saigon Jokers as Ejim has to ult himself out of the arrow on the hunts used and the cow is going to be well and truly safe, but two ultimates traded for one. Yeah, so worth, not worth, all the abilities really relatively low cooldowns. The advantage that they do have is the Ejim not level 11 yet, which is where you get that second point in the ulti, which means that it will be down for quite a while. Another opportunity for them to force a fight, and they're going to do it right yeah, now. Yeah, slowed down. Concussive blow stacking now as Sue so is just going to make his way out after taking a love tap. A Chiefs member on the bottom side. Swiper going to turn up towards bot lane. Start shoving this one through with his teleport at the ready. None there for Saigon Jokers as there's the Claw of Doom once again. And Ejim, they won't leave him alone. He's trying to get some vision around the Baron. He knows that that is the objective that Saigon are trying to set up for. He gets baited. He overextends and he gives away his life. Honestly, just a big misplay from Ejim, knowing that he doesn't have his ultimate. He should have backed away. He should have just warded up his own jungle. And instead, he gives away his life. And now Saigon are a real threat to Chiefs of taking away that Baron. Yeah, Swiper actually mega narring his way towards the mid lane. And the Baron is certainly being considered. Saigon Joker's here at 25 minutes. There are no scrying orbs. And it's interesting that they're waiting here as Weave as well is going to spot them out. There's the Flash Ultimate from Sue as Spooks slowed down Swiffer in the right position to try and get some Q damage across the side. And Swiper's very tanky. Good slow onto Row as the Hyperprox being searched for finds it with the Boomerang. And now without their Echo Tank frontline, it's going to be hard for the Saigon Jokers to get this done. And Spooks and Rays just say, yeah, you guys just fight all you want. We got a lot of damage. We'll take down this inner turret, and they're going to do so for free. Celebrity still has his Ash Arrow, the most reliable way to engage for the side of Saigon Jokers. That was a five versus four, but this is the kiting power of Chief's composition. They disengage from the fight. They rotate mid. They get a tier two turret, and now they're going to look to do a similar play down in the bot. And already managed to uh, lock away. Oh my goodness. That quick draw was out of control from Spooks. Ray's spell shield there as well. That would have been instant communication. Not used to seeing that, to be perfectly honest. That was fantastic. Saves their lives, but unable to get the turret as Saigon Jokers make their way around. So we're seeing mid support synergy along with AD carry and jungle synergy. Just in the right place at the right time. Damn right. Chiefs definitely looking to net themselves another win as they now currently hold on to a 2,000 gold lead. So working towards these third items, unfortunately for the Civet, it looks like that she's decided to go for the Infinity Edge second rather than her attack speed item. Uh, I like it, you know? You're a fan? Yeah, it gives you that big earlier power spike is, is, is what I'm thinking. Well, I think that it actually delays the power spike because you're actually moving away from the attack speed item when you're also with the high AD item. Uh, but 
you're going to hit an even bigger spike when you get to that three items, which is what looks like Raze is going to go for. And given that they're not trying to force fights right now, they're just only going for the objectives that they know they can safely take, I feel like that it's a fairly safe play as Egypt now coming in for the flank top. Yeah, Parallel Convergence is going to be there. Ward goes down, headbutt into the wall, gets the mini stun, makes sure he layers the CC for as long as possible, as now Raze utilizing his passive very well as the Chiefs stop this Baron attempt. Sue taken down very, very low. Has rode the same thing. Still has the ultimate. And Swiper's just going to say, well, you guys have fun. I'm just going to smash this turret to death with my and head. now, because Roe has been forced back from the top lane, it should be an easy turret coming out for Raze. Uh, should there be very little contention. But Celebrity going to try and stave him off. Will be enough for now. This tier 1 turret, remember, could have been taken so much earlier by the Chiefs. And then I'm going to have to eat my words because they're going to take it anyway. As the Weaver's Wall comes out, zoning tool. Yep. And look, you, you actually did mention the fact that that mid-outer turret falling down was so very important. From that point on, the Chiefs took down three in a row in quick succession Oh yeah. based on being able to just move a little bit more freely across this map, as well as the fact that the Saigon Jokers were waiting for a Baron catch a little bit longer than they would have otherwise wanted to. Chiefs could do with extending their vision line a little bit further. One of the problems that you do have when running this Graves uh, with the... More aggressive smite means that you do lack on the vision side. Very reliant on your support to get that deep vision down. But they can compensate for that with the pinks. And you can see a lot of pinks in their inventory. They just need to put them down. That's all they need to do. Uh, <laughs> very important part of the strategy in order to get that deep vision, which right now Chiefs are a little bit hesitant, hesitant to do, given that they've been forced back after taking all these turrets down. Yeah, a ward on the field is worth three in the hand or something like that. I believe that's the old saying. <laughs> actually don't. I don't even think <laughs> whether that's anywhere near the old saying. I'm not a good person to talk to about sayings. <laughs> <laughs> well, another red buff going to be stolen away by Hanyan. Definitely good. As Rose okay. shoving out the bottom side. Seismic shove clears out the mid lane as Levita is going to easily answer. Both of our mid laners now with basically instant wave clear. As Swiffer looking to go back. We'll see whether he completes something like a Rylai's or whether he gets a death cap like the boss he is. Uh... If he does, I'm going to complain. Damn uh, it, it's a <laughs> why, did, why do we have to be right with the first one, Vettius? <laughs> because Rylai's makes more sense. Yeah, it's but a it's safe. It's exactly. The safe, comfortable option. Uh, what confuses me is how it builds out of a belt. You know, I mean, how does a wand <laughs> turn into a belt? Arrow going to come out. Bit of a zoning tool. There's yeah. a fight kicking off now. Yeah, Ejim also uses a bit of a zoning tool. Gets a nice double polarize, but Levita looking for the ultimate. Raze is going to get caught out and destroyed. A celebrity grabs a kill. Swiffer finally turns up as Levita doesn't take damage from the Q. Uses the Zonyas to get out of a lot of it. The last one just utilizes the claw. Another Q comes in and Swift is able to lock it up in the end. Can they actually find any more back here as the Chiefs possibly will get a stun off it? Oh no! Ro gets himself out immediately. Sue in trouble. Unbreakable. Not quite going to be enough, but Flash is out of the way. Ro! Oh my goodness! That's a struggle! As he does make his way through. Celebrity in trouble after taking down Spooks and now Hanyan tanking up the turret and the double comes out of the volley. The Ash picking up the kills in the end, making it a lead for Saigon Jokers in that fight. And I have no idea where to start with that fight because it was all over the shop. So many small interaction happening everywhere. But the biggest thing to note is how Celebrity was in no danger whatsoever. You can see still sitting at full health. Still just free to get all that damage down from the back line. And this is why the two-item power spike was so valuable for him. Going for that early... Uh, Hurricane means that he could do so much AoE damage. Saigon, they're looking to pick up the Baron. There's only Egem to contest. Yeah, Ward in the pit, of course. It is a 4 versus 4 when Swiper comes back up as Parallel Convergence is here, just trying to get them out of this pit. Raze is going to be able to help take down Ro, who ults himself up. The last crit is there. Hanyan looking to escape with his Baron buff. It is going to be the arrow landing on a Raze, though, and Sue still running towards the top side. Should just be the sacrificial lamb to make sure... <laughs> They will be able to get away with some of these Barons, and Swiffer is able to lock up the kill. So, two kills go down to the Chiefs, but they do lose the Baron. Overall net game for Saigon, but let's have a look at the setup. Ejim completely out of position, nowhere near his team. You can see that two members of the Chiefs are still around the Dragon. This is why things go so horribly wrong. It's so easy for the side of Saigon to actually shut down the AD carry. 
And then initially, this wall was just fantastic because you split up the Saigon so beautifully, but Swiffer has to invest so many resources to get the kill. We didn't see the end part of that fight, but it was basically just a very back and forth trade where very dangerous exchanges from both sides were taken, but then it was simply a matter of Celebrity using his range advantage to clean up the extra kills. They get themselves the tier one in the mid, they get themselves the Baron, and now they are still sitting at a gold disadvantage. Yeah. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> About a thousand gold. Being three turrets in the lead does certainly of help. Of course, of course. And now double Mountain Drake and that ocean there as well for the Chiefs. But this is just the beginning with this Baron. Still an outer turret on the bottom side of the map. Saigon Jokers need to make up for lost time, not spent killing towers. Should be able to wrestle back some of that gold for themselves. And this is where we can see the 1-3-1 one, one coming out from Saigon, because even though the teleports are down, Lissandra, very powerful in the side lane, especially up against Swiper. He does have the Spirit's Visage completed, but the, uh, the Lissandra is going to have a much easier time than the Echo will against Sonar at this point in the game. And then the Echo, if he can go in a side lane up against the Talia, well, if you just go back to day one... Uh, I think yeah. you'll remember what an Echo can do to a Talia. <laughs> Saya uh, does uh, provide nightmares in that department. That is certainly true. Another 600 gold, though, probably before the Chiefs feel comfortable to fight because Rays doesn't have his QSS completed just yet. Just the Null Magic Mantle. He's making his way back out of the base yet again. Down still by about 40 CS. The Celebrity really has had a bit of a stranglehold on this game. Four items very close to being completed as Ray's not going to get stunned, doesn't have to use the spell shield as Rode, doesn't take too many auto attacks as well, just being frustrating on this Echo. Three items complete. Saigon just need to keep the pressure away from Swiffer because his wave clear is so strong right now that it is just stymieing the push from Saigon. So just keep shoving up mid, keep Swiffer's attention there, build up a big minion wave in the bottom, and then just hard commit for the turret. A situation where the Chiefs just are too slow to react, but right now, here comes the wall. Yeah, there's the Weaver's Wall. Sue's actually knocked over the side. Swift is going to get knocked up as he flashes over his own wall. Swiper looking for the flank off the back end, but Celebrity still in a great position. Ejim knocked forward, can't find the Pulverize, and will just get taken out. It's the only pick here for the Saigon Jokers, but that engage did not work for the Chiefs. And Swiffer was not planning on coming out on that side of the wall because he just put himself in such an awful position where he had no way to get out. He closed the gap four row and now with Saigon Jokers having the numbers advantage they're looking to push onto this tier two yeah Ricochet is going to land a little bit onto Sue but it is going to be the inner turret falling down pretty short work made by the Saigon Jokers who are able to even grab the crashing wave towards the top side and row going to catch back up to Swiper now the big thing here is that no severe gold deficit has been developed for the Chiefs. They can still very easily pull this game back. They just need to rely on the power of their team fight composition. Civet, note, she has now completed three items. Same for Swiffer, and then we can never underestimate the power of this Nar. You only need one good wallop, followed by the the bouncing blades of the Civet to just easily swing the team fight around. As well as that, you've got a Graves level 16. He's completed three big items himself. So there's a lot of damage on the Chiefs that the Saigon Jokers have to respect. Yeah, and I feel we're just waiting for the Void Staff to be done, which it just was by Swiffer, and that QSS to be finished from Rays. And the Chiefs will feel certainly a whole lot better as far as getting these team fights because Spooks and Rays will have so much consistent damage. Double AD carry will do that. And there it is. Double QSS for both of those players. Boots of Swiftness actually opt opted for, for Swiffer. Do yeah. like it based on his name. And it also helps with the roaming early game. We yeah, I mean, of course, of movement speed is another yep. thing. <laughs> um, but uh, it, you have to remember that the... Um what Talia is all about is kiting, and you just kind of want as much base movement speed as possible. These boots of swiftness do help with that, so it just builds very nicely into a kit overall. Um, as now we see Saigon trying to commit onto the Talia lane, and this is where you're starting to see the struggle for Saigon Jokers. The best bet for them is to set up the 1 3 1 and just rely on their side laners, who are very powerful right now, to try and draw the attention of Chiefs away from Swiffer. And as long as you can do that, as long as you don't play around the Swiffer lane, you have a much better opportunity to break into the base. Oh, Swipe, you can see, going aggressive onto Row one more time. Gets another hyper proc, lands the boomerang, Row down at half health. Swiper doesn't seem to notice his health bar doing anything. 
This particular point almost has his Randuans. Very even on farm between these two top laners. Couple of extra kills here for the Echo, but just not quite equipped within the kit to battle the mini Nar, the king of being frustrating in a 1v1 <laughs> scenario. As Ooh. Swiffer just uh, takes down um, Levita. Right. Say Levita. <laughs> um, that's an oops. Yeah, sure. I, I would say oops, <laughs> probably, if it was he me. He has Zonyas, he has Belt, he has Flash, and he died. I think that's where you type in, I was heading back to base anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I think. Um, um, that's what he said. I'll give you that one. I'll give you that <laughs> one. You know, have a freebie. It's, yeah. it's on me. Yay. Uh, but all about building friendships and international wildcard. Hey, that is a good point. Although we did already identify the rivalry between these two <laughs> teams. Oh, dear. Uh, <laughs> that, that, no, that's called extending the olive branch. <laughs> <laughs> oh man so hopefully we get a replay of that because I'd very much like to see how one does die at 37 I think, minutes I think it's called game. this like circle comes out of a brush and then you're dead so what is it he gets spotted on a ward circle gets, comes out of a oh brush my and he's dead <laughs> 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 we picked it so that's four item Talia ladies and gentlemen yeah um if you didn't if you weren't convinced that she scales oh, I feel like that's enough proof for you um but Swiffer something that I've heard uh Many tales about Swiffer is he's oh, either yeah? the best player or the worst player in, uh, in Australia. Um, <laughs> and so far, he seems to be having a great performance. He's certainly having a good day. Swiffer is actually going to look to cut off this Baron Pit. They're going to commit to it as Raze turns up as well, and they, they will be it. able to burst this one down. Hawkshot spots it, but just watches the big purple worm fall down as Swiper... Playing defense, not going to get stunned by the parallel convergence as Arrow's going to find the Nar, but the rest of the Chiefs have turned up. There's on the hunt as Sue just not into the wall. Massive damage from Swiper as Levita gets into the back line, but will get melted down. Good Zonyas, and the parallel convergence will be there. Ro takes a lot of damage. Spooks grabs it with a collateral damage as a double kill comes in for the Graves. It is going to be Ro and Sue falling down in trade for Egim, and the Chiefs will take that any day of the week. The Saigon Jokers get themselves uh, in a very unfortunate situation. That choke point could have been so good for the Lissandra, but Swiffer's positioning was outstanding. Sitting just behind the wall, getting so much free damage down that in all honesty, the Saigon Jokers just had no answer for. That was such a great team fight from the Chiefs, using their kite comp and using all the damage that they had to just set themselves up for success. And now they're going to try and extend that lead. Yeah, well, this is possibly risky. Ro is going to be coming up, does have the teleport, but my god! See you later, Elder Dragon. That got melted. This is what happens when you have Raze uh, when you're fighting a big objective like this. Oh, yeah. And he's got a heck of a lot of items. Yes, he certainly does. Now, Elder Drake, bear in mind that is three dragons as well. So that's going to give a lot of additional burn damage. But it only has a two-minute window of use. So Chiefs now have to push this. No more dilly-dallying. Go straight for the enemy base. You have to try and close this out now. 40 minutes. You should have had plenty of time to scale up your comp. This is the opportune time to use it. You, heard it, you heard it here first. Video says you've just got to do it, Chiefs. And you had a way of pushing on the top side of the map, but not anymore. Celebrity takes it down. Swiper gets to work on the bottom lane. They are right now grouping up in the mid. They do have a way of pushing in their favor. Where oh. is the vision, Chiefs, as the arrow comes out? Sails majestically by. Looks beautiful. Love Heartseeker, Ash. As the Weaver's Wall oh, going to cut off nice. the retreat. Bellybop does get Hanyan back in here, but it is going to spell the death of the tower. The inhibitor going to fall in a similar way, and they're just going to rotate towards the bottom lane. The Chiefs moving around the map beautifully. They listened to you, good sir. Yes, they did. That was a fantastic setup. And now Saigon. Yeah, Pulverize is in there. Massive seismic shove. Knocks them both back as Hanyan does get through. Raze is knocked into the team, but he's kiting. He's still alive. Look at the damage as Spooks is able to get in there. The Sivir eventually falls down, but have they wasted too much? As Spooks launches himself forward, Hanyan's going to fall. That's a triple kill for the Graves. He's looking for the Penta as Sue's going to fall. Oh, Quadra comes out for Spooks. And this is the performance that we want from the Chiefs jungler. Can they get the Penta? You still have time. It's only Celebrity left alive, Spooks. Go for oh, it. Oh, Swiper. That was Spooks' Penta that you just missed out on by just a moment. A celebrity. That's a six item ash. You gotta be careful. <laughs> as, yeah, the shutdown does come in, but they're focusing on the Nexus. The Chiefs are gonna pick up their second victory of the day. The shutdown comes in from Swiper as Celebrity falls for the ace. And to finish off the day, the Chiefs are victorious.
<laughs> Spooks has a smile on his face, so not too upset that he didn't get the penta at the end. I mean, a quadra is still a quadra. You can't be too upset about that. But wow, what a way to end the game. I mean, that ultimate from Talia was phenomenal. Oh, yeah. So many creative ways to use it, and I've never seen it been done like that. To capitalize on the fact that the enemy team is completely out of position, you cut off their ability to come back into the base, you get two quick inhibitors, you force a quick team fight, and then you immediately end the game. This is exactly what I wanted the Chiefs to do, and I am very glad that they were able to execute it properly. Yeah, and they were able to have their minion waves in the right position as well. I mean, you were talking so much about when you